Today I can hear an exciting testimony of a young lady whom I met 17 years ago in Newcastle. I call on Emma to come and share her testimony today. Come Emma. Thank you, Pastor Jenny, and thank you so much for welcoming me into this beautiful church. Um, so I'd like to start with um, the beginning. Um, I was quite young at the time, and I was about 14 years old, and I was at a church in Heatherbury, in Newcastle, and at the time I had been dabbling in witchcraft um, and just worldly activities, um, just being a rebellious teenager. Pastor Denny was preaching at the time and each time he would speak, um, I would walk in and out of the service. I could not be within the presence that he carried. Um, so he stopped in the middle of the service and he said, no, I'm delivering this girl right now. And at, the, at that time, um, I was wearing a bracelet and there was witchcraft upon it and he asked me to remove the bracelet and there was a massive deliverance within that. Um, yeah. So, which was fantastic. However, I then got back into things and as we know, um, the, the demons can come back seven times worse in those moments. So, um, one night, Pastor Denny was... He was clearing out his desk and it so happened that the Lord said to him prominently, call this number. And so he was obedient and he called the number. Now, when my parents came into the bedroom, I was in that moment slitting my wrist um, and about to take my life. I was so certain and I believed with all my heart that I wasn't meant to live any longer. Uh, it wasn't even a matter of just wanting to escape. It was, I was absolutely certain. And just in that moment, he said, put her on the phone. So I took the call and he said, you will live and not die. And he said, you will see your 16th birthday. And he said, you will see marriage and children. And he spoke life into me. And so um, it's funny because last night, uh, God brought me to the um, Ezekiel about the dry bones becoming as flesh. And it was speaking, you know, it was through prophecy that the dry bones became flesh again. And that's exactly what I believe that Pastor Danny done within me. He then said, I, will, I want you to come to Melbourne and you're going to change it. It's going to change your life. Um, I want you to come and live here. Um, in that time, I, had, I met the Lord had a relationship with the Father. It was an incredible time. I got to go around and I got to share testimony. After, after a while of growth, I was able to go around and share testimony with Pastor Denny and just um, everything that he did for me through the Lord as well and the provision of Jehovah Jireh, um, what, what came into my life during those times was just incredible. So anyway... <clears throat> um, I'd like to say I'm still alive. <laughs> and in that time, <laughs> yes, I have two children. I have two beautiful children. And um, I am truly blessed. I'm truly blessed. But what I would also like to say is um, a week ago when I found out um, that I was coming to Melbourne, which was provided for me, the Lord provided the money for the ticket. Um, he did it all and, and it was just absolutely amazing. And so the words came to me, you have to go back to go forward. And spiritually and naturally um, is what he was speaking about in that moment. So he's speaking about going back to the first love, coming back to him, coming back to the father. And then he showed me, he said, I'm bringing you back to the natural where you met me, where you met me here in Melbourne. So I've had such an incredible time in that. Um, and I also met up with Pastor Danny for lunch the other day and I got to share with him a, a prophetic download that the Lord had given me on the remnant. And he asked if I could please share it. 
So I'll just open it up. Give you just a moment. <clears throat> I see a flock of sheep, although few in number, with thick quality coats of wool. Healthy sheep. I see them standing in holy water, and they receive the outpouring of oil upon the heads. As they receive, they are grateful and enjoy the process. Once the oil is poured, they continue to walk to higher ground. As they follow toward the sheep, uh, shepherd, although they cannot see him, they hear him. They know his voice. I see the sheep coupled in twos, even families, receiving the outpouring. Um, soon after, the little lambs who are hopping and jumping, playing in the Lord, excited but still young and a little careless. I see a hand pick them up as they, as they slowly um, straying from the bigger sheep as they were heading toward the wolf's den. I see a few rams come through with very large horns and strong chests. They are not to be challenged or taken for granted. They know their place, their authority and their strength. And upon their forehead to the bridge of the nose, a mark of the blood the blood of the lamb. I see mantles on their horns and purple and gold sashes over the shoulders. Um, In the distance, I see a den of wolves scheming and frothing and anger, with anger and jealousy and hate, plotting on how, sorry, so little, how to tear apart these sheep as they know this flock is untouchable. Beware of the attack. Um, beware of the attacks that are being formed and calculated. Beware, says the Lord. Focus on the shepherd's voice and continue to higher ground. As you do so, I will eliminate and terminate the enemy. If during the time the sheep are to take their attention off the shepherd, they will slip and fall down the mountain way where the wolves are waiting and ready with anticipation and and hunger to devour the sheep. I see the sheep on their journey to higher ground up the mountain, eating plentiful with food source provided every part of the way, along with clean water supplied, even at some points in a trough, other times from springs of water. I see the wolves come in on attack mode from different angles, but God using the natural elements and ways of life to kill or scare the wolves away. I see through the discern, um, I see they only get one attempt. Each wolf, as they are overthrown and dealt with, the sheep are aware through the discernment, but also unconcerned as they know they are protected by the Lord. I see the sheep throughout the journey kneeling and bowing their heads. This is the intimate time in the secret place with the Lord, I see them walk within a safe dif- distance, um, spending moments of rest in God. As they do so, a fire is lit immediately as they come. And I got the scripture, 1 Corinthians 2 9. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. I see the rams at times fend off the wolves, but leaving unharmed and even more strength and knowing on how to fight off the upcoming and oncoming attacks. They then return to the sheep and explain how to pray and impart authority and wisdom into the rest of the flock. Although it may look like a sheep, um, sorry, although it may look like a steep pathway, and a narrow pathway up the mountain. It will be done with ease for the most part. In the parts where it becomes tiring, I will send help. I will have another there to help encourage you up. Though, um, and push forward together. At times the track's so narrow, it only will be single file. These will be times this coming year, I will ask you, to walk alone in some things and trust in me. 
For I know you as I created and formed you. Do not fear these moments. Instead, embrace them as I am teaching you to walk in a deeper faith with me. I see the sheep carrying an olive branch in their mouths, representing peace. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will provide shelter for the storm, says the Lord. So I just want to encourage you all that we as the remnant, I just, I just really want to encourage you to have your, your lamps ready with the oil, you know, awaiting the bridegroom because we are in times where the Lord has such an urgency on my heart and I'm sure on many of your hearts also that he is coming back. And he's he's a victorious God. And he has created and formed us for such a time as this. And each and every one of us are here for a very purpose. Jeremiah 29, 11. I'd like to leave it there. But thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Praise God. I remember the time that I met, met, when I met Emma. She was this young little naughty girl. <laughs> she would come into the church and go out. Come to the church and go out. Come to the church and go out. I thought, wow, what's happening here? No, you're not going. Come here. And he prayed. And praise God, she had deliverance. The, that day, when she, when she, well, the thing that she does not know is when she was ministered to, the demon spoke to me and said, she will not live till 16. We have chosen for her to come to us. I love it when the devil, the devil does tell me. I said, you got it wrong, Satan. She will live to 16, she will live to 18, she will live to 21, she will get married, she will have children. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So praise God. I had the opportunity of um, being at the wedding, a mass wedding and uh, being the main person who carried the wedding. Uh, what do you call it? The c- a celebrant. I married them. So praise God. Well, glory to God.